intimidated her with guns and threatened her with imprisonment are true. And as you'll see, other claims against Sheikh Mohammed are so outrageous they're difficult to believe. But as we've been reporting for two years now, the royal ruler has form. There are two versions of Dubai. The glitzy and progressive city it tries to portray to the world. And the dark reality, where many women are second-class citizens, nowhere more so than in their own royal family. If you are watching this video, it's not such a good thing. Either I'm dead or I'm in a very, very, very bad situation. Now a bitter divorce case has seen the family's dirty laundry aired and the all-powerful patriarch Sheikh Mohammed embarrassed for the judge declaring his daughters were kidnapped and are now wrongly imprisoned. The Sheikh was also accused of trying to marry off his 12-year-old daughter to an alleged murderer. His house of cards has collapsed and people are seeing the real Dubai. You now have multiple ex-wives speaking out publicly. You have daughters all trying to escape. You have serious, serious problems in the family. And tonight, this is my idea. we can reveal more women want out. I just can't stand it. I am thinking of leaving tonight. As rebellion stirs in the region. I'm trying to lead the revolution. I'm trying to make girls there speak up even more. And if they're scared to talk, I will say what they want to say. My vision is to Dubai to be number one. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has it all. Ruler of Dubai, multi-billionaire, global dignitary, and owner of the world's biggest racing stable, Godolphin. Of the Dubai World Cup. And it's not just countless dollars and trophies that he's collected over the years. The 70-year-old's also managed to marry six different women and father somewhere between 24 and 30 children. It's not often that people can find a solution in one package. Highest profile among the wives was Princess Haya, a glamorous member of the Jordanian royal family who he wed back in 2004. It is seen as a man's right to take more than one wife. Dr. Raihan Ismail is an expert in Middle Eastern studies at Australian National University and says Sheikh Mohammed does as he pleases in Dubai, where no one dares challenge his power. The term cult of personality is sometimes used when you look at leaders like Kim Jong-un. Is there an element of that when it comes to Sheikh Mohammed in Dubai? He's the leader and you don't say otherwise. I think so. I think we're talking about an individual who's very powerful. If you speak out immediately, you will be arrested. You can't really tweet against the ruler. So I think repression plays an important role in understanding why people don't speak out in certain areas, particularly in, in Dubai and the UAE in general. After years together on the world stage at events like Royal Ascot, Princess Haya bin Al Hussein is set to be in fear for her life. The world was left stunned when last year Princess Haya fled to London on a private jet, leaving her husband without warning and taking $56 million with her, seeking asylum for her and the couple's two young children. She's requested asylum and filed for divorce. Royal divorce is indeed a battle royale playing out in London's High Court. In Princess Hyre's corner is Baroness Shackleton, who represented Prince Charles in his divorce from Princess Diana, while Sheikh Mohammed has called in Helen Ward, who represented Guy Ritchie when he divorced Madonna. But the Sheikh's attempts at damage control have failed, with startling allegations aired and damning findings delivered. This is not a person that should be ruling a country and certainly not one that is, is a friend of the West. David Haig has campaigned to the United Nations for many years, alerting the world to human rights abuses in Dubai. And this divorce has now shone a light on what really goes on behind palace walls. Among a litany of evidence, lawyers for Princess Haya told the court she wanted her 12-year-old daughter protected from Sheikh Mohammed alleging he was trying to force her into an arranged marriage with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. He's the man many people believe ordered the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the Saudi consulate in Turkey. It gives you some sense of the regard that he has for females. 
Yeah, the, the, the reality of the situation in Dubai, that, that's what it shows you. you. You know, behind all the pretense that they have about equality and diversity, it's just horrific that some a father, let alone a leader of a country, would think that that would be an appropriate thing to do to, to, to anyone. The Sheikh denies that claim and the judge decided the allegation could not be proved. The court heard things first turned sour between Sheikh Mohammed and his wife last year, when Princess Haya began raising concerns about the Sheikh's treatment of his daughter from another marriage, Princess Latifa. And I'm making this video because it could be the last video I make. Yeah. We now know that that's when Princess Haya realised what was being done to Princess Latifa. She wouldn't stand for it. And ultimately she took her children and she fled for her life. 60 Minutes first uncovered Latifa's story two years ago and she tried to flee her tyrannical father but ended up being captured by armed forces that he sent to storm her escape boat near India and then locked her up back in Dubai. Her friend Tina Johanim was also arrested on that boat. They were telling me, uh, close your eyes or we'll shoot you right here. Take your last breath now. What was the last image you have of Latifa? She was kicking and screaming and she was fighting for her life. And you haven't seen Latifa since then? No. Sheikh Mohammed has always denied the allegations as well as claims he abducted another runaway daughter, Princess Shamza, in a separate operation in England years earlier. But in a landmark finding, the High Court judge declared both kidnappings did happen. It is a huge step that a judge of this significance comes out now and says, yes, I believe this story. Sheikh Mohammed did that. I mean, you guys were the first mainstream channel to cover it in detail. Um, and, you know, I remember very well at the time, everybody was amazed and thought it can't be true. This really isn't true. We were up against one of the most powerful Arab men in the world and his media machine trying to make us look as if we, we were lying. So to see it in black and white from the highest family court judge in England, it's a good feeling for us. Of course, it's never gonna be the perfect feeling until Latifa is free. Princess Haya's support for Princess Latifa apparently enraged Sheikh Mohammed and he sought to punish his wife for what he saw as treachery. On two occasions in March last year, Princess Haya said she returned home to find a gun in her bed with the muzzle pointed towards the door and the safety catch off. Nearby were notes reading, we will take your son, your daughter is ours, your life is over. On another day, a fleet of Sheikh Mohammed's helicopters landed at Haya's house and in front of their two children, the pilot told her they were there to take her to a desert prison. Sheikh Mohammed confirmed to the court that his helicopters did indeed land there, but claims they did so by mistake. However, the judge dismissed that and said he believed Princess Haya's version of events. The Sheikh refused to actually give evidence in person in London, instead trying to soften his image by staging a global women's forum in Dubai alongside Ivanka Trump, all while the hearing took place. Sheikh Mohammed likes to think of himself as a very influential world leader. This is so damaging to his credibility. The hypocrisy, the rank hypocrisy of seeing someone promoting themselves as a human rights ambassador and a world leader who values equality and diversity and the reality of what's set out in that very clear judgment from the highest family court in England shows you very clearly the, the, the reality and it takes away all the propaganda and all the PR and, and, and all the facade that Dubai have tried to cover up which is essentially kidnapping of two young women, abuse of a wife and, and intimidation of those around them. Those are what's been found, breaking the law, abusing women, and doing it again and again and again. But if you want to read the damning findings, you certainly won't be able to do so in the UAE. Sheikh Mohammed now has tried to hide the truth in Dubai. Ex essentially, it's completely censored. If you're in Dubai and you want to read the judgment from an English court, you can't, because it's blocked. I mean. Of course, that's what he's going to try and do because he wants to maintain his image. But 
his house of cards has fallen. The world knows what he did. Coming up, pleading for help. This is my ID. Another royal tries to escape. I will leave in a few hours. As rebellion grows. I'm trying to lead a revolution. Across the region. A number of activists have been in jail calling for more rights for women. That's next. Oh. Just background noise. I don't want anyone to hear me. It's um, eerily familiar. This is my ID. But this mm -hmm. is another young woman claiming to be a member of Dubai's royal family asking for help to escape. I am thinking of leaving tonight. Why? I just can't stand it. I'm, I, I just cannot stand it. She says she is Sheikha Mehta Al Maktoum. She is not a daughter of ruler Sheikh Mohammed, rather part of the extended royal family. I'm sick of my parents. I feel like... <sighs> The footage was sent to David Haig, the human rights advocate that another Dubai princess, Latifa, also sent videos to when she was looking for help in her own escape bid in 2018. Um, I will leave in a few hours and um, I just want to say thank you for everything. Like, I really do. Why did Beta want help? A, a similar story. It was the essentially male guardianship system where she wasn't allowed to live the life that she sees all the Western women that are expats in Dubai living. And I think that's what makes it very difficult for, for local, the locals in Dubai, for the Emiratis, is that they are still under a very archaic system of male guardianship, particularly for the women, yet that they, their noses are pressed up against designer shopping malls, designer nightclubs, but they're told, no, you can't take part in that. It must be very, 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 very difficult. And, and understandably, many of them want to leave. David says Princess Mater's escape bid failed and he lost contact with her late last year. Her whereabouts are now unknown. We've been unable to contact the woman in the video, but have spoken with multiple people who claim to have assisted in her efforts to flee Dubai. Hello, my name is Latif al -Maktoum saying she was inspired by Princess Latifah's own bid for freedom. And I'm making this video because it could be the last video I make. Yeah. Because of globalization, modernization, access to information, and also the ability to see what's happening elsewhere, I think women are pushing boundaries and challenging traditional practices. So it, it does feel like the tide is changing on this now. I think so. Dr. Raihan Ismail has watched Dubai evolve for decades. She believes many locals there are so thankful for the economic prosperity under Sheikh Mohammed that they're happy to look the other way when questions are raised about his human rights record. Do you think many people in Dubai would know about the abduction and the, and the detention of Sheikh Mohammed's daughters? I think so. Um, they will have access to that information. But to be honest, I don't think the population would care very much. Um, Why is that? It's, it's seen as a family matter. Um, the royal to lock up your daughter. Yeah, but but it's a it's not it's not that they accept it, but they're saying that that's what the ruler wants to do. It doesn't bother us. We're talking about you know privileged individuals here with a lot of power. Is it, is it perhaps the path of least resistance for the public? Because yes, maybe allowed. they disagree with it, but the penalty of speaking out uh, absolutely is too serious. I mean, yeah, you know, it's almost impossible to speak out against um, royal families in the region and in the context of the UAE. That is uh, considered almost treasonous if you speak out against the royal family. The unrest in Dubai's royal family is unfortunately not unique. A similar scenario is playing out right now over the border in Saudi Arabia. This is what uh, the rebels, the government, the citizens have fought for. Where Princess Basma bin Saud, the daughter of the country's second king, is being held in a notorious prison without charge. Starts with security, then equality, freedom and education. The princess had long campaigned for improved women's rights in the country before disappearing last year. This month, in a now deleted tweet, she announced, I was abducted without explanation, together with one of my daughters, and thrown into prison. I have done no wrong. 
So the state tells you what's okay and what's not okay. So if you have a female activist who's trying to ask for more, that's not acceptable because you're not allowed to speak out against the state. So a number of activists have been in jail and these women have been calling for more rights for women. Is the image that Qatar portrays to the world of itself accurate? No, no, definitely not accurate. Aisha al Qatani is another powerful voice for change, having escaped what she describes as an oppressive and abusive life in neighbouring Qatar. Your family must be pretty powerful. Yeah, they are. They're influential people, mostly in the military, have their own connections. My brother's an ambassador. Doha is the glittering capital of Qatar, another Middle Eastern hub promoting itself as a progressive city on the world stage. But this is what life often looked like for Aisha in her homeland. Not surprisingly, when she made it to London, she cut her hair and embraced a Western wardrobe. The city is gorgeous. It might be a, a trivial element to some, but that's a nice suit you've got on. What, what would the reaction be if you walked down the street in Doha in that? <laughs> Yeah, well, for a start, I was never allowed to walk down the streets, and I'm not even exaggerating. If I chose to wear the suit and walk in the streets of Doha, I would get murdered. And this is the hypocrisy of this country. Aisha had planned her escape from Qatar for years, but knew she couldn't fly out of there because laws stipulate local women under the age of 25 need a male guardian's permission to board a flight. So her bid for freedom actually came on a family holiday in Kuwait late last year, where she snuck away to the airport on her own to catch a 3 a.m. flight to London. How fast was your heart going when you boarded that plane to get out? It was just like I needed someone to pinch me because I couldn't believe that I actually did this. And I was telling myself, if I was a blonde girl with blue eyes, my family would just tell me, bon voyage, and that's it. But why do I have to go through this escape plan and prison break-like story just to leave, just to, you know, travel, just to, my freedom of movement? Had you read about the two princesses who fled Dubai before you made your own bid for freedom? Yeah, I've been looking a lot of stories too about girls who run away. I either run away to have a new life or I stay and just basically emotionally and mentally die. And if this plan works and I get to live, great. If it doesn't, then it was worth it. At least I tried. You're gambling with your life. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> it's just intense to think about it again. The whole escape plan. and the things that women have to go through just to have a normal life. Coming up. I lived in a James Bond movie for a few months now. The dangers of life on the run. I bribed them and everything works with money in London. And reputation ruined. Is that the type of person that Australians want to see holding up the Melbourne Cup? So what now for the Dubai ruler? I hope it will be the start of the freedom for the Tita. That's next on 60 Minutes. Aisha al Katani is always looking over her shoulder. Worried her powerful family wants her back in Qatar. Click here three times. Uh, it calls in the nearest police units and shows my location on the map and starts recording immediately. After landing in London late last year, the 23-year-old has had to change locations a number of times after her family managed to track her down. I lived in a James Bond movie for, what, three months now. Take us through why it was a, a James Bond movie. Yeah, well, it's just, it was a constant chase, and it's just knowing that they're always going to carry on looking for me. I was in Cardiff. I was walking in the mall, and I could see my brother at the end of the, you know, um, path. And I thought I was hallucinating. And he said, you know, the same people that you're praising and they're protecting you, um, I bribed them and everything works with money in London. 
Aisha managed to get help that day and for now is safe at a secret hideout. But she knows that continuing to paint a picture of what life's really like in Qatar will make her a target. Yet she believes she's lucky to have escaped and it's now her duty to speak out on behalf of the women still there. I think it's very important for the world to see the real image of women's situation in Qatar. There is something wrong about this country, you know, and how it tr treats women. Because uh, the amount of propaganda that we produce is just so infuriating for me as a feminist, seeing these lies all the time. Less than two kilometers away from where we spoke to Aisha, another woman from the Middle East is also standing up for women's rights. Dubai's Princess Haya is currently locked in a bitter custody dispute with her former husband, Sheikh Mohammed. The judge in this case found the Sheikh intimidated his ex-wife with guns and helicopters and also declared for the first time his daughters had been abducted and wrongly detained. And that's not the only drama Dubai's ruler is facing right now, with the United Nations also investigating the Sheikh over the treatment of women in his royal family. Now, that will be a finding that will be issued, we, we hope, within the next few weeks. And it's to us very clear that what that finding is going to say, and it's going to be very, very damaging. And we hope it will be the start of the freedom for Latifa. David Haig has led the campaign to free Latifa for two years, ever since she was captured by special forces at sea, trying to flee Dubai. He believes it's time for not just political leaders, but anyone who does business with Sheikh Mohammed to reconsider their relationships with the controversial billionaire. Sheikh Mohammed takes so much pride in his horse racing stable. It has a huge presence here in Australia. Is he the kind of person that is fit to run a major stable? The short answer is no. And one of the things that we're doing in the Free Latifa campaign um, is essentially using the judgment, as we have done with the UN, but at racing boards and racing uh, regulators around the world to show that this man is not fit and proper. Not just that has he broken the law in the most serious ways, he's kidnapped two women, abused women, abused his wife, used intimidation, involved firearms, helico I mean, helicopters. You, you couldn't make this up. And is that the type of person that Australians want to see holding up the Melbourne Cup? The winds of change are blowing across the Middle East and women are the force behind it. From princesses fleeing palaces to brave young firebrands, their voices won't be silenced. You're trying to lead a revolution. Indeed. I'm trying to lead a revolution. I'm trying to make girls there speak up even more and if they're scared to talk i will say what they want to say i think i can i mean i've got the energy i've got the time i've only just turned 23 a couple of weeks ago and i i have all the doors opened for me and as my friend said london is the city of dreams so